My name is Caesar Stone and I am here because I have essential tremors that I might have had most of my adult life but it really didn't start affecting me until I was around 50 years old that it started getting intrusive into my life. My mother has it. My grandmother had it. She had head tremors. My mother has tremors in her hands. And um, as I said, she's around 91 years old now. So um, I sort of knew or had an inkling that it may happen to me eventually. I went into the medical field and I have to inject people. And I noticed that I was having a little trouble with my hands when I was trying to inject people. But besides that, I would go to a um, football game. Somebody would ask me to bring them an extra drink. And I was okay as long as I was bringing just for me, but when I had to bring extra things, all of a sudden my hands would start shaking. Yeah, over the years I've taken different medications. The most recent one is propanolol. I couldn't take the full dose of the propanolol because it would affect my IBS, so I was taking a small dose every, every uh, day before I went to work, just to get me through the first couple of hours, so to speak. Well, I, I train myself to eat with my left hand. I am right-handed, and I noticed that the tremors were less on my left hand, so I started eating with my left hand, and I've become quite proficient at that. Not as good as I was when I was uh, eating with my right hand, but I tend to do more things with my left hand. If I grab a cup of water or something, it's always with two hands if I have to drink. If I want to flip my bacon in my frying pan, it's two hands trying to get it to flip over. So, you know, there's things that I've done to sort of compensate for it. Try to hide it from people by, uh, sort of doing a sleight of hand, I'll talk to them so they don't notice what's happening with my hands. But uh, I rarely eat out anymore with, uh, with anybody because I don't want them to see me. At work I do different things so people don't see it. Like I can't hold a tray in, in the cafeteria. If, if I bring a tray, I bring my food with me and I bring a sandwich. And that way they don't see me eating out of, out of a plate or something. And it's easier to hold on to a sandwich with two hands while I'm eating. I was doing research for years on this. Um, I would go online and I followed them doing the clinical trials. One day I, be, I joined the uh, International Essential Tremor Foundation. And um, through them I found out that there was going to be a podcast and I listened to the podcast and that's how I found out that you guys were here. Very excited to be here to finally bring this thing to fruition. I just am totally amazed that they can actually just take a beam and zap my brain. It's like we're here, you know, we've actually arrived. Actually, I feel pretty good, a little bit lightheaded. A um, little bit unsteady on my feet, but overall I feel very, very good. The tremor is gone. It's gone. I'm doing everything. Um, as I was saying before, I, I'm hesitating to use my right hand because I'm so used to using my left hand. I can drink. I made bacon yesterday. I flipped it with my right hand. I had no problem. I ate my yogurt didn't spill it all over everything, and my food I was eating when I was remembering to use my right hand. The only problem that I had was they put this rubber thing around your head that stores cold water in it, and it was very, very tight on my head. And that was driving me crazy the whole time that I was in there. And it was getting pretty annoying um, towards the end. It was a very weird, experience not during it was towards the end i felt like waves were going through my body which was a really really strange feeling and then they pulled me out 
and they had me draw circles. And then they said, okay, we need to do another one. So then I was like, okay, let's go back inside. Like if you can imagine being out in the sea and watching waves going, crashing through the surf, that was what was going on inside my body. Those things that I'm describing is seconds. It's not minutes, it's only seconds that I felt like that. But I'm not gonna lie to you, it's not an easy thing to get through. Uh, it's something that you have to decide that you want to do, and that you want to get through it. And once you make up your mind that you're gonna sit in there and get it done, you're gonna do whatever it takes to get it done. When I came here a couple of months ago to talk to them, they took the time, because I told them that I was claustrophobic. They spent time with me, talking to me. I hadn't committed to anything yet. They took me into the machine. They actually put me in the machine. They held my hand. They did all kinds of things to see how I was going to be able to handle it. And then I talked to them, and then they called me on the phone afterwards and spent an hour talking to me on the phone. and. Um, just made me feel so comfortable about the whole procedure that um, I just think they went above and beyond. You know, anybody that else that would have done it, you know, might have been a shorter conversation. They spent as long as I needed talking to them and then some with everything. And they were the ones that gave me the idea of getting, getting the hypnotherapist. Just the general things, going out to dinner with friends and not being worried about my hands shaking and being embarrassed, you know, to be out in public doing things like that. Um, that's a big help. I would definitely, I had looked into DBS originally and when I found out that focused ultrasound was available, I thought this is a no-brainer because there's no surgery involved. Um, I would definitely go for it 100%. It's a, it's a life changer, it definitely is. It's gonna affect the rest of your life. And there's no reason to suffer when you have this available.